So let's have a look in this video, especially for sublimation really, um, but applies to any design of course, placing different images in individual letters so that they show through the letters. In Affinity Photo for iPad or desktop. Now obviously the commands are slightly different on the iPad and the desktop, but it's the same program so you can find your way to it easily enough. This one I'm using is on the iPad. Now here's a quick step-by-step -step tutorial on how to put those individual images inside individual letters. And you can see what I've done there. Very nice. Create a new background. And in this launch affinity photo and import the ink spatter background that's transparent. It's the one you can see that it's transparent on a black background. So you've got black ink spatters on a black background. Nice. <laughs> You'll find this background <coughs> supplied with the files for this exercise on my website. The address is in the YouTube description. Or you can find your way there if you've been there before. Using artistic text, drag out the word love. Set the font to Abril Fatface. Now we want a big bold font like that so that you can see images through it. Now set it to the center vertically and horizontally. This is reasonably important later on when we convert this to a sublimation template if you like. And of course if you don't want a sublimation template you can have it anywhere on the canvas that you like. Now you've got the word love and here's the trick. Select the text layer. And you can see it in the, uh, in the layers panel there. Tap the commands, which is the three dots on the iPad, and convert to curves, about uh, three quarters of the way down that list. Slightly different on the desktop, but achieves the same um, end result. So you convert the word love to curves. And there you have it. In the layers panel, we notice that there's a group made up of the letters as individual curves grouped in their own layer. Very neat. Doesn't matter what color it is, just leave it black because that disappears anyway. Now we have our individual letters, we can locate images or patterns to place in each letter. So let's take the first letter, the letter L. Go to the, before you do that step, just go to the layers panel and highlight the letter L. Select the letter L. Now let's put an image inside that layer and we can pull it in from the stock tab. So go to the stock tab and type in portrait and it'll give you a list of people whose portraits are there and you can pull in those images. Well gee, I don't even need to pull in one. Place it over the top of the L. Now obviously it's way too big. The best way to reduce the size is not fiddle around with the corners because that will give you an image that will change the shape of the portrait you're pulling in. It won't maintain the aspect ratio unless you're very good at doing it. The easiest way is to go to the Transform Studio and you can see it there. It looks like an old floppy disk with a little square in the corner. And you can see I've got the arrow pointing to the lock. Click on the lock and that will force the aspect ratio to lock in place and you can reduce one side or the other and it will automatically modify the other side. So I've got the lock in place and I'm just going to use the left hand one which is 3744 pixels and just drag that up or down um, to get it to the size you want. And There we go. Now we have the size we want. You can see I've brought that down to 1236 pixels by 1854 pixels. But the lock was selected and it doesn't appear to be showing there so I must have deselected it in the process or maybe it's just not showing up in the screen capture. But believe me the lock is selected so if I adjust 1236 to anything it will automatically adjust the other side. Now I don't want it the same size as the letter because what I want is the girl's face in the upright of the L. And that's just where she's going to end up. Now we can move our image into place, making sure it's just above the L layer. 
So wherever that image ended up when you pulled it in, it might have been top, bottom, above the background, could be anywhere in that layer list if you weren't watching what you were doing. If you had have selected the L as the operative layer, when you pulled in that image, it would have automatically placed itself just above the L. But that's where you want it now, just above the L. Now, select the image and drag it down to halfway into the L layer. You'll see the blue bar goes across, just drag it down so it's right across, the blue bar is right across the girl's mouth, if you like, in the L layer, halfway down the L. Let it go and it will be masked by the L and you can see what you've got there. Now, if you find that it's slightly off center, you can see that the L is still selected. Uh, the girl, sorry, the image is still selected. So you can move it around a little bit um, to get the image focused where you want it inside the L. Very tricky. Now let's complete the other letters. There's the same deal, adjust the size to best fit the letter. Now, where do I want this girl to appear? You can see the central part of the O is her, let me turn around, right eye. Her left eye is showing in the right part of the eye. O and her right ear is showing in that in that other part of the O. So that's the mask. I don't want it to be too small. Drag it into place as before. The second image is now in place in the letter O. And that's all we want. We don't you don't want to try and squeeze the whole image in there. Now, next step, all portrait images in place. You just repeat that process until you've got all your images inside the letters. And you can move them around by selecting the actual image and you can still drag it around a little bit to get it exactly where you want it. You can see in the letter E I've got that man's ear in the upright and his eyes and nose just in the central bar of the letter E. There was no other place for it. <laughs> but it puts him in there and gives him some validity. And the chap with the beard, a black and white image, just his eye, and I wanted to focus on the beard. So we've got two girls and two boys in the image. Now let's dress it up a little, because otherwise that looks fairly plain. Duplicate the L layer and remove the image sub layer so that you're left with just the letter L. That's easy enough to do. Because when you duplicate the layer, the L layer, it will also duplicate the fact that there's an image inside the L. So you go to the layer that you've duplicated and just remove the image and you're left with the letter L. Bring it below the original. You can see there I've dragged the letter L down just below that girl. Color it and then go back to the original layer and reduce its opacity to 65%. I can explain that. The L is completely blue. Now I've gone back up to the the curve just above the L where the girl's icon is showing there and reduced its opacity to 65%. So she's the girl is showing through the L. Or the L is showing through where the girl is, if you like. You'll get the hang of that, and I'm sure you know how to do it. Now, while still on the original layer, go to the FX tool and add an outer shadow that complements the L color. That's that bluish color. And apply the settings as shown. The opacity is 50, radius 55.5, offset 52.9. Yeah, I could probably make that 53. The intensity is about 12%. The color is that blue and the angle is 45 degrees. The outer shadow there selected and you tap the outer shadow to make it work of course. Now if you want to turn that off at any time you just click the little switch to the left and turn off. You can turn it off, turn it on, whatever you want to do. Now your layers should now look something like this. That's fairly straightforward. We've done the L. Repeat this process with the other letters. And you can see I've got uh, a very, it's almost a bright pink in the letter O. And I've got the 
out of shadow there. The V and the E, I haven't put in coloured letters, but I've still got the offset um, shadow. So with two letters complete, you can start to see the potential. Now let's turn this into a sublimation design for a mug. 6.4 inches by 2.8 inches. Fairly mm, standard size for a, an ordinary household coffee mug. Nothing fancy and there's a million people doing these out there. But this is how you can do it yourself. Select the entire document. Remember we started out with a document of indeterminate size. The size, I think, of the ink spatter image, which was about 5,000 pixels by 3,000 from memory. But anyway, select the entire document. Tap the document tool on the top toolbar and then tap resize. Now you can see resize there and you want the unit in inches on the right hand side there. The width is 6.4 inches and the height is 2.8 inches. You can see already that that will wrap around the mug rather nicely. You can see the groups I've got up there. Um, the background is the ink spatter and that white rectangle that shows up there. That allows you to see the ink spatter. Create a new layer in the newly resized document and drag out a white rectangle. Place that on the bottom of the stack as you can see there. This can help you visualize your complete layout and highlight additional elements if there are any. Remember white doesn't print so it's okay to put that there. Although when you want to send it to the, to the paper you can turn that layer off and it won't export however you want to do that. But I can assure you it won't, white doesn't print. When was the last time you saw a canister of white ink on your printer? To my knowledge there's only one printer that has white ink canisters and that's the Roland. And that's a very specific printer for very special jobs. <laughs> I don't know why you'd use a white ink print. But there you go. Now your finished mug sublimation image. You can see I've put in the borders there, the off shadow offset the colors, everything is nice. The last two letters don't have an overlay color in them and that image is not shown to scale. Now there's your finished mug. That's what your mug will look like if you get the job right. You could put family members in there instead of random images from the uh, from the um, stock image folder. You could put animal pictures in there, you could put what you like. You could just put patterns. You could put hearts and flowers in there. It's The choice is yours and it fits nicely on a mug. And again your sublimation work is some of the most original around. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe and like and touch the bell so you're reminded of new versions. Now this was the photo version, Affinity Photo. The Affinity Designer version follows next.